My name is Lynette Hampton. I am a resident of Lee County. We've recently uh, retired from the military. My husband and I moved back to Sanford. I used to live here as a child. Uh, it was, we couldn't live anywhere in the country, and we decided to come back to Sanford. And then when I get back here and find that we might lose our home to contamination. Stokes County There's Prison. There's a cartoon, I believe it's there. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah. We're in the prison. Oh man, that's pretty interesting. Oh hey look, there's that. Maybe it's the prison. There's yes, like, yes, oh, well, yeah, there's barbed wire over there. That's the prison. Oh, Super okay. jail. Jail is fun. This On our first day of filming, we drove into the town of too. Walnut Cove having absolutely <laughs> no <laughs> idea what to expect. Yet the footage we shot and the connections we made over the next few weeks amounted to an undertaking that was far more than we had anticipated. If Stoke County prolongs this, Duke Power could shut down the Bluish Creek plant or go out of business, and our county is stuck with cleaning this mess up at our expense. Well, we, as a county, let Duke Power come in to our neighborhood as an industry, and that's like inviting her over to your house and she trashes it, and she leaves, and you have to clean it up. That's not right. Walnut Cove is located in Stokes County an area comprised mostly of rural farmland in the foothills of Appalachia in North Carolina. Members of the county's towns and communities are under threat from an abundance of coal ash ponds, a method of storing coal ash, the byproduct of the process used to generate energy from coal combustion. In February of 2014, a coal ash storage pond at Duke Energy's plant in Eden, North Carolina, developed a breach in its protective lining and spilled over 80,000 tons of toxic materials into the Dan River. The resulting ecological cataclysm has caused a multitude of issues for the environment and surrounding communities. The spill did, however, bring national attention to Duke Energy and its environmental practices. Yeah, yeah. Duke, Duke's a very environmentally responsible company. Um, you know, we, we follow all the rules and regulations that are required to. And sometimes it's very complicated. And there's sort of different opinions sometimes about that. But the reality is, is you know, the coal ash ponds, the way they were all determined and how we manage ash was part of just the regular regulatory environment over the years. And that's the way we've managed coal ash and the way we've used coal, you know, for the last, I think, about 80 years. We've mm -hmm. used coal to produce electricity. So uh, there's going to be some long-term damage. Uh, there'll be things that will take a long time to recover. That ash material is on the bottom and it's moving downstream and it will gradually move into Kerr Reservoir and perhaps cause problems there as well. So the long-term damage is yet to be assessed. We're only uh, about a year and a half to two years now downstream of the spill mm -hmm. uh, in terms of timing. So uh, it's a matter of uh, you know looking and monitoring and assessing. Uh, as far as actual being able to clean it up, uh, the little amount of dredging that was done uh, was just a drop in the bucket because it recovered mm -hmm. you know two or three thousand tons of material when probably eighty thousand tons went into the river. So most of the stuff's still there. Despite being upstream of the spill itself, Walnut Cove and other towns within Stokes County are still not safe from the effects of coal ash. The Blues Creek Steam Station, only a 10 minute drive away from town, contains the largest coal ash ponds in the state. Over 4.1 million gallons of ash rests in 350 acres of unlined ponds at the plant, and these ponds are by no means safe. Not only do they pose a risk for breaching, but locals, scientists, politicians, and Duke Energy officials have been debating the presence and effects of gradual seepage from the ponds into the local groundwater. Uh, I grew up in Stokes County. Um, my family has been there since the 1700s. They came down with the Great Wagon Road. Um, a really good friend of mine had a brain tumor and said so she had to have a, a um, craniotomy. And so um, I just started questioning what was at Blues Lake. A lot of people are really sick and they are spending their time and their money going to the doctor all the time. So once you have a brain tumor, which are very prevalent, I mean, it's, it's standard. I mean, my uncle was like, well, so-and-so's got it and they're fine. I mean, they just accept it. Like, this is just a way of life. Once you have a brain tumor, you can't drive for six months. 
you know, and people will go on disability. I mean, it is costing, it is costing the taxpayers to have this serious, these very serious health conditions. Further compounding the issue, the county has begun looking into the possibility of fracking. It alone has been known to do extreme amounts of environmental damage. Yet the presence of structurally unsound coal ash ponds makes fracking even more dangerous. So one thing in blues that I've been very concerned about is that the state is very eager for fracking in North Carolina. The area they test drilled in was is called the Walnut Tree, which is only like one of two or three historically black communities in the entire county. that they want to frack is right in the middle of the water table. Like usually like in North Dakota or you know some of these places out west they go like 1700 feet. Well this fracking is like at 98 to 326 feet or something like that. But it is literally right next to the coal ash pond which you know could cause the pond to fail. Well, the fracking process creates fissures. That's mm -hmm. how they release the gas. And that material, or that process, uh, will allow material to seep into places uh, you know it wouldn't normally go into groundwater, into some, in some cases, in surface water, private water wells, that kind of thing. Local advocacy organization Appalachian Voices has long been working with community members to help them have a say in changing county environmental legislation. On September 28th, 2015. The organization, alongside members of the community, attended a commissioner's meeting to voice their concerns regarding coal ash and fracking. But most importantly, a vote on a three-year moratorium on fracking was to take place at the meeting. And you'll find that a lot of times the legislators that have decided of what they're going to do, they find it convenient not to be there when people are coming to question them about certain things that affect them. So this is one of the important things that we need to be involved in the process. And the most important thing is that they are there as constituents, voted in for the people yeah. and by the people to do the biddings of the people. This is where the community voice needs to be the loudest. This is where citizens should have a say. After all, it's this community and nobody else that will have to deal with the long-term effects if the closure method is inferior. The state, who ignored the problem and fumbled and failed multiple times to demand a cleanup, and Duke Energy, a convicted criminal, who repeatedly put profit over protection of the, the environment, the state and Duke are making decisions. And uh, Blues Creek does remain a candidate for a capital place solution. Um, like I said, there's a lot of engineering and analysis is being done. I point out that that 90% of what coal ash is is iron, calcium, and aluminum. When you look at the makeup of coal ash, it's similar to municipal land waste, similar to um, what you find in the soil. And so what, what just happened here tonight? We uh, were given a three-year moratorium to stop the fracking for now, and hopefully we'll find um, ways to stop it completely from coming to our area. The issue of coal ash and fracking applies not only to Stokes County, but to neighboring counties as well. Poorly constructed coal ash storage ponds exist across the state and continue to affect the communities around them. 
Concerned citizens from all over NC gathered on November 14th at the statewide meeting of the Alliance of Carolinians Against Coal Ash in Lee County to make their voices heard. Individuals used this opportunity to speak about their own efforts and opinions regarding the topic of coal ash. I'm Dawn Crawley. I live on Colin Road and I have a small farm and I use a pond to water my animals, which is a big concern because I live directly next to where they want to put in the Colin Road site. I have milk goats, which I won't be able to consume the milk. I have chickens, ducks, the garden, horses, miniature donkeys. Um, well, I'm a member of Environmental Lee, which is a chapter of Ruddle, and in conjunction with Chatham County Group, we've got a lawsuit against Dina because they issued the permits even though we gave them, you know, significant reasons not to. And our local government, we went to them, to the um, city council and the board of commissioners, and they say, well, we can't do anything. The legislature's passed, you know, controls, and we can't do anything against them. We're going to run out of places, and too many places are going to be polluted, and too many people are going to get sick and die. That even though it's not in my backyard, it could easily be in my backyard, mm -hmm. and it is in somebody's backyard. So it's it's very very important. Mm -hmm. I'm a raging granny, <laughs> and they are an international disorganization that sings for peace and justice. So it's something that a lot of the grannies are very concerned about. Um, most of us have grandchildren. Um, we're concerned about our children and our grandchildren and their children, and it's not a problem that's going to go away. So, yeah, it's important to us. Lord, give me time to run this race, a heart to accept thy grace. I got a few more mountains and hills to climb, but he'll be waiting at the finishing line if you can't help me. Please don't stop me. Move out of my way. Don't try to block me. I got a race to run. And I'm running by faith. At the finishing line, I'll see God's face. Let me tell you something. I've been running for Jesus a long time. Running both night and God's face.